everybody to Ohio Stadium in Columbus, where today the third-ranked team in the country, the Ohio State Buckeyes, puts the nation's longest winning streak on the line. They're looking for their 14th win in a row as they play host to the San Diego State Aztecs out of the Mountain West Conference. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Sean McDonald along with Chris Spielman. Delighted to have you with us. We'll be joined in just a moment by Shannon Spake. The Buckeyes are number two in the country heading into last week's opener against Buffalo. They struggled to beat the Bulls in the AP poll. Oregon jumped over them to number two. It was a so-so day for Ohio State, but Braxton Miller, their leader, did about what you'd expect him to do. Yeah, he played pretty well. He probably would take that pick six that he threw and take that back, but Braxton Miller needs to be a different quarterback. Urban Meyer was quoted earlier in the year that I want a great quarterback that's an athlete, not an athlete that's a quarterback. And one of the things Braxton's trying to do this year is stay in the pocket. So we're going to show you right here that he's going to get the snap and look at the patience. He's going to look to his right, look to his left. Now last year he's going to take those lanes and run the football. This year staying patient, keeping his eyes downfield, allowing receivers to come open and something different about Braxton this year instead of throwing to a man shot he's going to throw a guy open which is throwing to an open space. That's where he's improved, and they need him to keep improving if they want their offense fully effective. San Diego State coach Rocky Long says Braxton Miller is, in his opinion, the leading candidate to win the Heisman Trophy. He also said he was shocked by the start to the season for the Aztecs. They lost at home last week in San Diego to Eastern Illinois, an FCS team, and they got hammered by a score of 40-19. to 19. They were shaky in just about every area and really out of character. Yeah, I think surprised Rocky, and he said one day, I don't care who we play this week, we just have to get better. In order for them to get better, they can't throw the ball 64 times. They are built to run. They pride themselves on being physical, and they weren't last year. Now, if they're going to run the football, Adam Muema is a very good tailback, highly respected by the Ohio State coaches. It's a San Diego State team that went 9-4 and four last year and tied for the title in the Mountain West Conference. They expect to be better today as they take on the Buckeyes in Columbus. Another warm day in Columbus. It was very hot and humid for their opener last week against Buffalo. Some of the Buckeyes players cramped up. A bit more comfortable to be in the stands today. 85 degrees, 45 percent humidity, and just a light breeze out of the southwest. Urban Meyer and the Buckeyes trying to go to 2-0 and as we welcome in Shannon Spake. Well, Sean, for the Ohio State Buckeyes, you can pretty much say the band is almost back together as this week they get back three key players who missed the season opener last week. Safety C.J. Barnett is back from a sprained ankle. Also returning from a one-game suspension is All-American cornerback Bradley Roby and running back Rod Smith. Now, for Urban Meyer said for Smith and Roby, they have to earn their positions back. In this game, Roby has started that already in the film room. He's actually watched film from San Diego State for the last two to three weeks, has helped some of the younger players, things to look for, how to get better. Now, I did just catch up with Roby midfield, asked him what it's like getting back after 10 months. He pointed at his chest and he said, two touchdowns. So, Sean, he called a shot. All right, thank you, Shannon. We welcome those of you who watched Illinois beat Cincinnati. We're in Ohio State. Drew Basil kicks off for the Buckeyes. San Diego State won the toss and wanted to receive the kickoff. Maybe not a great decision. Basil's kick taken by Colin Lockett across the 10, and that was about it. We got a wallop by Craig Cataline. Interesting with their struggles on offense. They elected to go on offense first. Adam Dingwell is the quarterback. Junior from Rockwall, Texas who completed only 43% of his passes last week and threw four interceptions. I had some victim of some drops. Even a drop and an interception off the receiver's chest in the end zone. Let's see if his confidence in seven interceptions over the past two games for Mr. Dingwell. He threw three in their bowl game loss. They played in the Poinsettia Bowl in San Diego against BYU. 
They hand it off to Lockett. Scored their only touchdown last week against the Eastern Illinois Panthers. On the reverse that he took for 48 yards. Here's a look at the impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Chris, you mentioned Muema, one of the top running backs in the country, they believe. Lockett, talented but prone to drops. And you have Feely at the linebacker, very instinctive on some watch lists to start the season. One back behind Adam Dingwell, who throws incomplete. Intended for Rizel Ruffin, then that's the problem as far as San Diego State is concerned with Dingwell. He's just not consistently accurate enough to be as effective as they'd like. And Rocky Long likes a quarterback that's accurate. I think, Sean, that's the number one physical attribute that I would want from a quarterback. First and foremost is his accuracy. And I like the call because it's a little three-step drop on a little hitch route and could get his confidence going, but he one hops it to the receiver. Third down and six. Dingwell out of the shotgun. Design roll. And again, the man open right in front of him, and that wasn't even close. He's L. Ruffin again, the intended receiver. It also looked, Chris, like Dingwell might have had some room to run for the markers. Yeah, I think he's a little confused and his confidence is shaken. And, and don't be surprised if he continues to struggle, we see backup quarterback former walk on Quinn Kaler. So Lisi is on the punt. Junior from El Cajon, California. Their catch signaled and made at midfield by Corey Brown. A great field position with which to begin for Braxton Miller and the Ohio State offense. Braxton now a junior, Hubert Heights, Ohio. School record in total offense a year ago as he led them to the perfect 12 0 season, 3,310 yards. Needs 18 rushing yards today to become the all time leader in yards rushing among quarterbacks at Ohio State. He has 2,063 career rushing yards. Needs 18 to pass Cornelius Green. He's going to get some called runs by Urban Meyer. Only one called run for Braxton last week. Urban told us they want to get him in designed running plays. See how effective he can be. Out of the pistol, Jordan Hall coming off a career high 159 yards rushing last week in their win against Buffalo. He's one of our Chick fil A impact players for Ohio State. You also have Corey Brown. They're going to make a conscious effort to get Corey the football. And on defense, watch number eight, Noah Spence. Very quick and fast off the edge as a pass rusher. Handoff was to Jordan Hall. The Buckeyes went quickly but did not catch the Aztecs by surprise. Third down and six. Five receivers spread the field. Miller hit as he throws, has his man, the tight end, Jeff Hireman. Down to the 20 yard line. This is the difference in Braxton Miller right here. Staying in the pocket, understand the hit is coming, but his focus never goes away from his target and delivers the strike. And here you go with the hurry up offense. And out of the pistol, the fake handoff and a quick throw to Corey Brown. Not hard to stay on his feet. Finally swung down at the 16 yard line by Vanessa Harris. With help from Nat Burhey, their outstanding defensive back plays the Aztec position he'll be all over the field very quick pace as Paul spins down inside the 15 to the 14 Jordan Thomas part of that three man defensive line made the tackle one, one reason for the quick pace is that the San Diego State defense last week made 43 mental errors that was an astounding number Hall again on third and two and he didn't get the first down We'll see what Urban Meyer wants to do here on fourth down in about a yard. No thought process at all. The oh. offense gets right over the ball. Miller on fourth and one. Good cut to the inside. He has a first down. Tackled by Cody Gallia, a defensive end. The play goes to the seven, and Miller is still down on the field. 
Yeah, his helmet came off, which means he will have to leave a play unless Urban Meyer decides to take a timeout and save him. But there's one of those designed quarterback runs that we talked about. Quite frankly, if you're Ohio State, nobody want, other than Braxton Miller to carry that ball on fourth and one on a quarterback sweep. Urban Meyer still undefeated as head coach at Ohio State 12 and 0 last year the winner of the opener here last week of course Braxton Miller the on field general of that 12 and 0 season the big crowd here concerned it looks like they're looking at his left leg Took a shot in the head as well from King Holder. Timeout. Well, while we were away, Braxton Miller walked off the field, looked a little bit wobbly as he did so. One of the things, if he's going to be a running quarterback, which he is, that's part of his game, you need to take fewer hits. And he has to learn how to get down and protect himself. That's one thing they've been working on in practice. Kenny Guyton has proven to be a very effective stand-in, including last week, is in a quarterback for Ohio State. The senior pitches it to the freshman, Dante Wilson, touchdown. A true freshman speedster from DeSoto, Texas, the seven-yard run. First touchdown of what they think is going to be a great career as a Buckeye. There are designed plays for Wilson. And right there is the option. You want to get him on the edge, get him out in space, and let him do his work. Dynamic. Drew Basil to kick the extra point. Guyton is the holder. Oh, it's nice to have a backup quarterback with experience and production under his belt. You see Kenny Guyton running the option, gets attacked immediately, understands where to pitch, deliver a pitchable and catchable ball, and look at the blocking downfield. You're going to see number Chris Fields. He will bury his guy. Jeff Hireman gets his guy on the ground, and it's smooth sailing for Dontre Wilson. Sean, they wouldn't have had him with what's like football. First career touchdown is one of nine true freshmen who played last week for Ohio State. Here's Shannon Spade. Sean, they have currently have Braxton Miller on his back on the training table. They are looking at the left knee. Miller also has his face inside a towel, his hands over his face, but you could tell he's in a little bit of pain. He did walk off the field, however, under his own power. He walked immediately over to Coach Urban Meyer and said something to him, and then they brought him to the training table. So as soon as I get word on his condition, I will certainly let you guys know. All right, Shannon, thank you. They're in good shape with Guyton. Obviously, he's not as fine an all-around player as Miller. He'd be the starting quarterback, but Guyton threw a touchdown pass last week off the bench. Basil. Short kick this time. Colin Lockett caught it around the 10. He's out to the 33-yard line, so much better field position this time for the Aztecs. We check in with Robert Flores in the studio. All right, Sean. False start, five yards. All right, number two, Oregon. They had a school record 772 yards last week. Marcus Mariota goes for 71 here against Virginia. And right now they went for two, obviously, and they lead eight to nothing on the road against Virginia. Meantime, Buffalo, who opened against Ohio State last week, leading at Baylor 7 0. And Buffalo gave the Buckeyes a pretty good test. Dingwell got flattened as he threw it, and he threw an interception. Duran Grant picked it off after Dingwell got planted back near the 20 yard line. You might need to go to the bullpen. 
get Kaler warming up because he's going to miss his read right here. You got to read high to low. High receiver to low receiver. Number 40, Chad Young is wide open in the flat right there. Instead, he forces the ball into three men. The rule is, Sean, read a corner, throw the corner. If, if the corner's back, you dump the flat route. If the corner's up, then you hit the deep route. They're taking Braxton Miller off of the golf cart. The guy will continue as quarterback. Big part of that interception, the big hit by Curtis Grant, the linebacker on Dingwell. Guyton, take the inside handoff. Here's Corey Brown. Trying to pull away, and he could not. Tackled at the 47-yard line. Eric Pinkins, the safety part of this 3-3-5 defensive alignment, made the tackle. More than half the drives. He was the quarterback for Ohio State last year. Ended in touchdowns for the Buckeyes. Jordan Hall to midfield. Here's Shannon Spake. Well, guys, just caught up with uh, head, head trainer Doug Callen. They did take Braxton Miller off on a golf cart. Doug told me that they had an MCL issue, an issue with the MCL, a sprain and, or something like that, and they're going to put him in a brace, and the plan is to bring him back down here and get him back on the field. Third down and five from the 50-yard line. And movement along the offensive line. Offense, number 79. Five-yard penalty, third down. Marcus Hall, the right guard, one of four returning starters. Urban Meyer said he was particularly disappointed with the play of the offensive line last week against Buffalo. He felt they were the best offensive line in the Big Ten last year. They had four starters back. The only new starter is Taylor Decker, the right tackle, number 68, who had his struggles in his first start last week. They about four sacks against the Bulls. Corey Brown tackled immediately by Eric Pinkins. And that's what San Diego State wants to do, and they're more comfortable. Rocky Long is making all the calls from the sidelines and the audibles. And if you're going to play man defense that tight, the one thing you have to do is be good open field tacklers. And so far this game early on, they've done exactly that. Rocky serves as his own defensive coordinator. Last week he gave the players a lot of flexibility to call defenses at the line of scrimmage and it didn't work very well as Chris said earlier he felt they had 43 missed assignments which was an astounding number. Fair catch made by Rene Siliuano off the punt by Cameron Johnston. 35 yard punt. ESPN's College Football on ABC brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, the official hangout for NCAA football. Ford, only Ford gives you EcoBoost fuel economy and a whole lot more. And Gatorade, Gatorade knows it all begins within. Win from within. Well, Akron, Ohio native LeBron James said if he went to college, he would have selected Ohio State, even practiced at their facilities here during the lockout in 2011. To honor their native son, Ohio State gave LeBron a locker at the Schottenstein Center with a jersey and his name plaque. I wonder what LeBron gave Ohio State for that. I don't know. He's a big Buckeye fan. Regularly tweets during Buckeye football games. Adam Wemma up the middle. You mentioned how out of character it was last week for them, Chris, throwing a school record 64 times. Last year, with a different offensive coordinator, Andy Ludwig, who's now at Wisconsin, they were 65% run. So it was a total flip of the script under the new offensive coordinator, Bob Toledo. And a part of that reason, that Eastern Illinois got him down early, so they were forced to throw the ball, but they're not built that way. They want to be a physical football team. That's not what they are right now. Dingwell had to throw it quickly. He was under pressure again. Adam Roberts, the tight end, the intended receiver. There's Noah Spence applying the pressure. Good discipline by Noah Spence, not chasing the ball, keeping his eyes on his assignment, forcing the bad pass by Dingwell. Again, I know it would have been a tough pass, but one he's capable of making, but missed because there was a lot of green between the next defender and the ball receiver. Dingwell 0 for 4 with an interception. 
Spence off a terrific game last week, his first career start. An all-new defensive line, four new starters on the front four, the first time since 1985. Tim Busy went in motion. Dingwell given time this time, and it's incomplete. There is a flag down in the offensive backfield. It's a holding call that'll be turned down. Holding. Offense, number 65. Penalties decline, fourth down. Jerry McGinn is the referee. It's a Big Ten officiating crew. I wouldn't be surprised here, Sean, if Coach Meyer decides to go for the block. Last week they went for the block and they had a, a roughing call. But he's aggressive on special teams. Now remember, he's in charge of all the special teams. I think with Braxton, you might go for the block. Here, you might want to set up your field position for Kenny Guyton. Joel Alisi to punt to Corey Brown. Over the years, when Urban Meyer's teams have blocked the punt, they are 18 and 0 in those games. Fair catch made by Brown. Ohio State will begin at the 44 under the direction of the backup quarterback because Braxton Miller was injured on this play. Right here you're going to see his left knee kind of get hit by Feely and the helmet pop off and that's uh, reminiscent of Purdue last year when Braxton Miller was cartered off the field. Clearly that left knee was giving him considerable pain as the training staff was adjusting it. The good news is Knighton has demonstrated on more than one occasion he's very capable backup quarterback. A lot of teams in the country love to have him as a starting quarterback. Rod Smith is in at running back. He was suspended for the opener last week. He chugs ahead near the 48 yard line. Gabe Lemon made the tackle. Rod Smith, a different type running back than Jordan Hall. You see Dontre with Dontre Wilson coming in the game. And Urban has about five or six plays for Dontre. Rod's a little bit bigger and more of an inside power runner than Jordan Hall. Diego State looks like he's going to be pressure off the edge down here in the middle of the O. Might have had that option called, Sean, called it off. Now he's elected to keep it and just got tripped up. Looked like he was going to run for the first down, but a good tackle by Nick Tenoff, the senior linebacker. And, you know, that's the luxury of having an experienced quarterback to notice the blitz, then call the audible and run the play away from the blitz. Outstanding job by Kenny Guyton. Third down and one, nearly midway through the first quarter. This time he gave it to Wilson. Turn the corner with ease and get chopped out of bounds at the 40. It's a first down. Demonte Casey, the tackle. A gain of eight. It's the same exact thing. They were exact same defense. They were showing pressure coming off the right. Off the left side, he audibles to the right. And that's, again, the experience of having a quarterback that understands how to run a read option, and that's a dual threat. Now, granted, he's not the runner Braxton Miller is, but he's, he runs well enough. Rod Smith back in and running back. Pass. Guyton checks it into the flat to Rod Smith. And he's shoved out of bounds. If you're wondering, Jordan Hall was number seven for the Buckeyes last week. He and Smith have changed numbers because of duplicate numbers playing on the same special teams. All running backs. Urban Meyer can catch the ball out of the backfield. Even when they get Carlos Hyde back, should be week four off of suspension. Quite frankly, they're a different team with Carlos Hyde. He's probably the best of the bunch at this point. Powerful inside runner. First and ten there at the San Diego State. 27-yard line. Right and throws. It is caught for a touchdown by Corey Brown. Being able to throw under pressure, having to trust the throw that if you're long, you're never wrong. 
And part of the game plan was to get number 10, Corey Philly Brown, involved. Right there. What a great pass by Kenny Guyton. Throws the ball where only his guy can get it. But through that under pressure, I'm getting smacked by Healy. 27 yard touchdown pass. First touchdown of the year for Corey Brown with five TD receptions a year ago. Here's Basil for the extra point. Fifty six yards in five plays. Guyton stood in there to take the blow and deliver a touchdown pass to Brown. Kenny Guyton three for three off the bench. With Braxton Miller out with a left knee injury. Thrown for a touchdown. In fact, for the year, Kenny Guyton, after his one for one with a touchdown last week, is now four for four. For 64 yards and two touchdowns. That's a nice QBR. Wouldn't be surprised if we see the quarterback change. Taylor could be coming in for the Aztecs. San Diego State has really struggled on offense to this point. Holland Lockett brings back Basil's kickoff. He got rocked and stayed on his feet. Managed to make it out to the 38-yard line. Devin Bogart finally got him down. 31-yard return. It was C.J. Barnett. They have two number threes. Don't know which number three it was who... Deliver that big hit, either Corey Brown or C.J. Barnett. Oh, excuse me, it was Corey Brown, C.J. Barnett's number four. And there is the new quarterback, it's Quinn Kaler. After a couple of ineffective series from Dingwell, went 0 for 5. Off the rough outing last week, here's Kaler. He's a walk-on. He's El Ruffin. Trying to turn the corner. Got banged down by Ryan Shazier. Outstanding linebacker. First team all Big Ten a year ago. Here's Kaler. Who played last year at Diablo Valley Junior College. Walked on to San Diego State. He actually tried to walk on right out of high school. And they turned him away. Didn't think he was good enough. Went to junior college. Put up some big numbers as you see. Group over 4,000 yards. Last year in 38 touchdowns, he does not have a strong arm, but he is accurate, and the coaches say he's very smart. And he's accurate there. Rizel Ruffin flagged down. Ruffin down just shy of the first down. Flag on the near sideline of the line of scrimmage. Regardless of the flag, I like the call by Bob Toledo to get him in rhythm. They run a little three-step with a hitch. That's where Dingwell. Eagle formation. Offense. Five players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty, second down. One hopped his, but right there you saw Kaler deliver the strike. And Ohio State corners are going to play off, especially to the wide side of the field. So that's going to be there for them if they want to get those quick little five-yard routes to get him in rhythm. Well, the positive play wiped out by the penalty. First against the Aztecs. First, it was accepted by Ohio State. The run of the tailback with the fullback Chad Young is an excellent fullback offset. And a delay a game penalty. Delay of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. Of course, we should point out this was a very good San Diego State team last year. Won nine games, won their last seven. Regular season games before losing the bowl game to BYU. They're picked second in their division of the Mountain West, the West Division. Mountain West does it pretty well, by the way. A lot of these leagues outthink the division names. <laughs> their two divisions are the Mountain and the West. <laughs> and they're picked second behind Fresno State in the preseason poll. Taylor sets up a screen. Moema in trouble at the line of scrimmage. Gang tackled, led by the middle linebacker Curtis Grant. 
And he's a guy, Sean, that needs to come on. They've been waiting for Curtis for the last few years. And he's really getting his first opportunity to start this year. Watched him last week play pretty well against Buffalo. But the more he plays, the more he sees it, the better he'll get. Ryan Shazier did a nice job of sniffing out that screen, but the pursuit and speed of the Buckeye defense is not a lot like you see in the Big Ten. I mean, they are an SEC-built defense with that speed. Third down and 19. Halfway to begin his collegiate career for Kaler against the number three team in the country. And he is down, swung down by Steve Miller, a backup defensive end. Junior out of Canton, Ohio. Well, this is a luxury that Ohio State has, is depth at the defensive line. You see number 88 coming off the edge right here on speed. Speed rushes are killers for offensive linemen. This is an offensive line that struggled last week, and that's against number 64, Zach Dilly, who's a new starter in the right tackle. Speed kills. Short, wobbly, end over end punt by Elisi. Fair catch made by Philly Brown. At the 43 yard line, 37 yard punt. Tonight on ESPN's College Football Primetime, two of college football's most storied programs square off. Notre Dame and Michigan for the final time in Ann Arbor. Number 14, Notre Dame. Number 17, Michigan. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. Tonight at 8 on ESPN. And watch ESPN. Michigan leads the all-time series. Began back in 1887. A lot of debate about how much of a rivalry it is. I, I love Brady Hoke. Brady Hoke, boy, hey, they're chickening out. Chickening out. Brady Hoke tells it like it is. Guyton, the late pitch to Jordan Hall. He's across the 50-yard line. Eric Pinkins made the tackle. Gain of seven on first down. You know, I was thinking about this, Sean. The one thing you want to do is maybe protect Kenny Guyton because you don't know the extent right now of Braxton Miller's injuries. I don't know if I want Kenny Guyton running the football or even taking hits. Quick throw to Devin Smith. And he lunges ahead. There is a flag down at the 50-yard line. If the play stands, it's a first down, but the indication is a holding Offense. penalty. Number 80, 10-yard penalty, second down. Chris Fields guilty of the hold, so that'll bring them back into their own end of the field. Chris Fields coming off a two-touchdown performance, had a pancake on the touchdown run by Wilson. Right there, you got to get your hands off of him as he starts to go down. Put the squeeze on Gabe Lemon. <laughs> You're no, awesome. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Keep it coming. Similar start to last week for Ohio State. First quarter was just about flawless. They raced off to a 23 to nothing lead against Buffalo. That's when some of the problems arose. That's a forward pass, a shovel pass, incomplete. One of the benefits of running that play, it is a forward pass. And if it misses the target, it's not a fumble, it's an incomplete pass. We talked to Urban yesterday, and I think he was somewhat satisfied. I know they were disappointing the offensive line, and I know for a fact, at least being out there on Thursday, that that offensive line has been challenged all week to get more physical and get tougher. And so far, they've done that so early in this ballgame. Third down and 12, a blitz by San Diego State. And Guyton has a man wide open. Devin Smith. Well, you have to admire, too, the way these Buckeye receivers fight for every inch at the end of the play when they get stood up. Finally, J.J. Whitaker able to get him down, first down. Well, a couple reasons why they do that, Sean, is because they have so many receivers, and everything is about a competition. If they don't go the extra, a little beyond, you know, they'll get replaced. Guyton, good job of recognizing the corner blitz and understanding where the open area of the field was vacated by the blitzing player of the uh, San Diego State defense. 16 yard gain, Rod Smith back in at running back. From the 43 of the Aztecs, Guyton right up the middle. Sixteen more on the run by Guyton. To talk about what a capable player is. He also become a team leader. It says a lot about him that as a backup quarterback, he was selected by his teammates as one of the captains this year. 
only reason why. I mean, he has good leadership skills, but you cannot be a captain if you don't produce. And anytime Kenny Guyton's got an opportunity to produce, he has. Again, I would be careful running him too much without knowing what the problems with Braxton Miller may be. Or tell him to get down and slide. Jordan Hall back in and running back. He turns the corner, lowers his shoulder, and goes out of bounds inside the 20. Chased out by Devontae Casey. Marrying improvement for the Ohio State offense from last year to this year is the receivers blocking downfield. You see those guys, they'll stay, stay, stay. Hyman with a good block, Spencer with a good block. And it's all about competition because if they don't block, just like getting the extra yards, they're out, the next guy in. Mark it right on the 20, second down and three. Ball has the first down. Picked up by John Sanchez. Back up defensive end. They substitute literally at most positions on the defense. They'll play four plays and then come out. The players largely handle the substitutions themselves. They might have too many men on the field there. There is no flag. Guyton on target to Brown again. One of two Corey Browns on the team. He's known as Philly Brown. He's from the Philadelphia area. King Holder made the tackle. Very near a first down at the four-yard line. It's interesting. Kenny Guyton notices the substitution, so he does his best to get the playoff in a quick manner. Great confusion. All on third down, less than a yard. Where are they going to mark it? Very close, right on the four yard line. Seems to be some confusion. The scoreboard had the last play as third down, but on the field they did move the markers to first down, so this is second and goal. This is an area they need to improve short yardage and goal line. All touchdown. And one way to improve is to challenge your offensive line during the week to get them tougher and tell them you got to change the line of scrimmage. You got to push them back. And it's exactly what the Buckeye offensive line did. Dominated that front line of Jordan Hall goes in basically untouched. His third rushing touchdown of the season. And the Buckeyes dominating this first quarter, which has just three seconds remaining. Basil on for the extra point out of Guyton's hold. It is 21 to nothing. San Diego State does not have a first down here in the first quarter. Miller's coming back onto the field. And as we mentioned, similar start for Ohio State to a week ago when they went out to a 23 to nothing lead over Buffalo. And then it got a little bit dicey for a while for Urban Meyer. Braxton Miller's back on the field. But Chris, I can't imagine why there's any reason the way this is going to put him back onto the field. He came back out with a big brace on his left knee. Guyton in control and this looks like a total mismatch oh, absolutely I, I, there's no way I, I, there's no point in bringing him back let him rest and stay and get healthy for next week when they go out to Cal Luke Basil kicks off and it'll be a touchback you know, going back to last week and this week similar starts this is where Ohio State had the problems with a little bit lackadaisical in their approach, and Buffalo was able to get back into that football game. Let's we'll see if uh, one thing Urban wanted to do was keep that intensity throughout the game and kind of develop that killer instinct for four quarters, not two. This will likely be the last play of the quarter. San Diego State. Minus three yards of offense. They've run ten plays for negative three. They've been penalized twice for ten yards. A 
Taylor quick throw and a good catch by Colin Lockett. Swung down immediately by Duran Grant. That's the end of the first quarter. All Ohio State. They started well under Braxton Miller. He was injured on that play. Took a shot to the head and hurt his knee, but they didn't skip a beat with Kenny Guyton in the game. This is the fourth meeting all time. The previous three, like this one, have all been here in Columbus. And Ohio State won the last one 27 to 6. In that game, San Diego State had three first downs. They might be hard pressed to get to that number today, the way this is going. They don't have a first down through one quarter. Adam Rema. Stopped right at the line of scrimmage by Ryan Shazier. Here's a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Stats from the first quarter. Total domination by the Buckeyes. That's one thing they wanted to do, and they only giving up 258 yards in total offense last week against the Bulls of Buffalo. They wanted to come out and make a stronger statement because they felt like they didn't play to their ability. And they have a lot of talent. Even though they're four new starters in that defensive line, they're all very good. Bring Taylor sets up a quick screen. Lock it ahead for a few. But the Buckeye defense all over these Aztecs. It was Steve Miller with his second big play of this first half. Well, that's the luxury of having depth at that defensive line position. And the other thing they have, a lot of, not a lot of teams have it. They have speed everywhere on this defense, which separates this defense from a lot of top teams in the country. They're up there with the Alabamas and LSUs of speed. Joel Alisi will punt. Philly Brown back at his own 25 yard line. Another low wobbly kick. Makes a good bounce for the Aztecs and goes out of bounds at the 22. 44 yard punt. Welcome back to Ohio Stadium where the Buckeyes lead the Aztecs 21 nothing in the first quarter quarterback Braxton Miller went down he spent some time in the locker room the team has told me that it is a sprained MCL a slight sprain he does have a brace on that knee on that left knee but I have uh, been told that he will not play the remainder of the game that was an Urban Meyer decision guys he could play if they needed him to but Myers decided just to keep him out of the game the rest of the day it's the right decision Guyton got it off. Incomplete. Intended for Devin Smith. David Lamar had the coverage. One thing about Miller not playing, you have to pre prepare for the future. And get Guyton this type of experience and these types of reps is valuable for this offense. the 28 yard line will be third down and four after a pickup of six and you know Chris because you live here and you're one of the all time great players in the history of Ohio State Urban Meyer didn't really love Kenny Guyton when Urban first got here and wasn't necessarily impressed by his work ethic and some other things and now he has great admiration for this young man. Well I think any time that Urban takes over a program he's going to challenge everybody He's, he's going to make sure they live up to that challenge or they won't be here. Kenny Guyton has answered every challenge and every expectation that Coach Meyer has of his players. Good catch by Evan Spencer. The way the ball might have been slightly behind him, but a good hands catch. And a run after the catch. A total of 10 yards on the play and a first down for Ohio State. San Diego State likes to play a lot of man. If you're going to play man, if that wide receiver is out past those numbers, understand that he's coming back inside, so you don't want to give up the inside, you want to protect it. Too loose on the coverage for the Aztecs. All day to throw. Guyton one on one coverage and it's intercepted. Intended for Devin Smith. 
But ripped out of the air by DeMonte Casey. First interception of the season for the San Diego State defense. He threw the line drive. This one you want to put a little air under. I don't mind the throw to have a jump ball. But Casey does a good job of turning his hips and bringing it down with the one hand. But that's a situation, Sean, where you throw that line drive. You want to throw it up in the air because of the height advantage that the receiver has over the defensive back. And normally, the Ohio State receiver, because of their height, will go up and win that jump ball. Holy thrown ball by Kenny Guy, the first one of the day. And the interception by Casey. His brother Walter was a running back. San Diego State played his eligibility last year as part of a good duo with Adam Wemma in the backfield for the Aztecs. Wemma the lone back here, and Taylor, the backup quarterback, still in there. He's on target, and there is the first first down of the game for San Diego State to the 35 yard line on the catch by Zell Ruffin for 14 yards. It brings a little bit more confidence to that huddle. And he's been on target, and Bob Toledo was correct. His evaluation is an accurate thrower. And he's been on target pretty much most of the day when he's had time to throw the football. One thing you don't want to have at the very beginning of a season, which you hope to be a conference title contender, is a quarterback controversy. And Kaler's hoping by the end of the day there won't be a controversy. He'll play well enough to earn the job going forward. He calls timeout. ESPN's College Football on ABC brought to you by the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado. The Venture Card from Capital One. Earn double miles you could actually use. And the Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. That's with Chris Spielman in downtown Columbus. <laughs> I was going to ask you when you modeled for that. <laughs> That's Arnold Schwarzenegger back in 1970. He won the Mr. World Professional Bodybuilding Contest here in Columbus at Veterans Memorial Auditorium. It's 1976. They've had the Arnold Sports Festival here in Columbus. Adam Wem on first and ten. The harder in a couple of yards. Christian Bryant. Bradley Roby made the tackle and as Shannon said at the beginning of the game they're a much better team this week than they were a week ago with the return to action of Bradley Roby all big 10 cornerback last year he's a playmaker he's known for the big plays and a physical corner he won't get physical corners a lot but Bradley Roby is one of those guys who come up and play that run tough didn't play last week against Buffalo served the one game suspension well, been an altercation with Bob in Indiana in July. Flag down, Kaler throws in complete too high for Ezell Ruffin. And it's going against San Diego State. I understand the urgent need to protect your quarterback because Ryan Shazier had a beat on the quarterback. And he gets tackled. He won the best tackle San Diego State made all day. You ever see Shazier coming up? They're coming. This will, they'll move him around. You take advantage of his athletic ability and speed. And they're going to pull the guard. Green coming around. He's going to protect his quarterback. And so he grabbed him by the neck and jerked him down. I understand that play. You don't want your quarterback hit. He's got to hide it a little bit better. Chase Price in the running back now. Sophomore. Diamond Bar, California, he gets the touch. And he got touched and slammed down by Ryan Shazier. Body to body souffle. Or suplex, one of them. He, he's good, Sean. I mean, he's as good as advertised. Ryan Shazier has improved in one area of his game, and that's his tackling. Last year, he would have came in and tried to roll block or hit the helmet to the knees. Something he worked on in the offseason was wrapping guys up and finishing. That's where he's improved most from last year to this year. Seven tackles last week, despite the fact that he was one of the players who cramped up and missed some time. Third down and 21 for San Diego State. Chad Young, the fullback to the left of Taylor. And he 
got as much as he could. Shazier chased him out well short of the first down. We mentioned, Chris, the quarterback situation for San Diego State. This is a team that expects to be a conference title contender again this year in the Mountain West. And we talked to Rocky Long last night. He said, I think your team is a contender. He said, well, I really thought so coming into the year. I'm not quite as sure after what happened last week. Ooh, at least he got it off, and then he got hit. There is a flag down. Fair catch made back at the 23. Christian Bryant hit the kicker. Personal foul. Off of the kicker. Defense, number two. 15-yard penalty. Automatic. First down. Uh, this penalty should never happen because there's a kick point. And teams that are properly trained on blocking punts run to the kick point and stop or throw their bodies across the kick point, which avoids all contact with the punter. And that kick point is usually marked. You see right here, Christian Bryant is going to lunge forward. You never want to block the kick coming Ooh. forward. As you see, good job. He didn't get his knee taken out. You want to come to the side, or excuse me, that's Jordan Hall. Again, with the double numbers. Yeah, I don't know why that has to happen as often as it does in college. But was Jordan Hall the starting running back out there? The other number two. I know that happens uh, because a lot of it's recruiting, Sean. Every every high school kid <laughs> wants their number because they're going to make it special. Get your own number. Yeah, make your own name. They should say too bad. <laughs> I'm with you. you 99 different numbers out there before you get the duplicates. Well, Grant came blitzing up the middle, the linebacker, and he got knocked down. Taylor got back to the line of scrimmage. Jay's here, credited with another tackle. And this is why everybody, including the Ohio State staff, likes fullback Young. Not only can he block, catch the ball, but he understands pass protection. He's going to get Curtis Grant right under the chops to protect his quarterback from taking a shot from number 14. He's a good football player, solid. Second and nine. Then nine minutes to go in the half. Buckeyes leading 21 to nothing. Chase Price, the ball carrier, across midfielders, Robert Flores. All right, Sean, trying something a little different for our AT&T All-America Player of the Week nominee. How about the collective Miami defense? Five turnovers in their 21-16 win over number 12, Florida. You can text vote to 34763. Guys, second straight week that the ACC gets a big win over an SEC team. Of course, Clemson had the huge win last week against Georgia. Conference in recent years that's been looking for some marquee wins. They piled up a couple here early in the year, the ACC. Taylor on third and five, flush from the pocket. Trying to lunge for the first down, but didn't get there. Pursued by Joey Bosa. Freshman from Fort Lauderdale, and the coaches are very high on his future. He can play inside and out. Yeah, and big, lengthy guy at 6'6", 275 pounds. Former teammate of mine, Eric Kumo, is Joey's uncle. Eric was the number one draft pick of the Miami Dolphins back in 1988 and was a fine pass rusher himself. Well, at least he's on the punt again. Fourth and two from the Ohio State 45. Already his fifth punt. Horrible bounce for San Diego State. And all the way back to the 23 yard line. Just a 22 yard punt. Here's a look at today's. I was trying not to interrupt the duck, and I still did. The <laughs> Is it real? trivia question: Who was the last Cleveland Browns player to win the NFL MVP award? Because we're here in Ohio, and it has a little bit of a hook into today's game. You give a hint? No. No? Yeah, you can if you want to, but don't give it away. Oh, no. I know you know the answer. Dontre Wilson took the pitch from Guyton and went all the way to the 41-yard line. King Holder made the tackle. 18 yards on the game for the true freshman. Well, Wilson's going to be the answer right here. Good job again of reading the option for Guyton, giving him a catchable ball. 
And dynamic speed is one way to describe Wilson. They've been talking about him, Sean, since the day he arrived on campus at training camp. Announced that he was choosing to go to Ohio State on live TV in Dallas. Here's home in DeSoto, Texas. Procedure penalty here against Ohio State. Ball start. Offense, number 79. Five yard penalty, first down. It's two of them. And Marcus Hall, a good player, long time, solid veteran. Offensive line has been physical today. That's one thing. Ben Warner, the offensive line coach, Coach Meyer challenged him this week. Get tough. Reading our headlines, maybe in the preseason, about how good they were going to be. Nice, good decision to keep it. And also, a good decision to go out of bounds, chased out by Eric Pinkins. Well, four returning starters, the only newcomer is the right tackle, Decker. He's the one that struggled the most last week going up against future number one first round pick Leo Mack from Buffalo. But I like to see how he responds to that challenge. You struggle early on to trust your training, you stay with it, you'll get better from that experience. So far today, he has gotten better. Looked out to hire him in the tight end, but he gets upended by King Holder. Junior from Oceanside, California. One of five players on the San Diego State team from nearby Oceanside. Another thing about that offensive line, they have Corey Lindsley, the starting center, back in there full time. He played 17 plays last week against Buffalo. He's kind of the bell cow, the leader up front. He's had a foot injury. Does a good job of spreading that ball around to different receivers, finding the open area. That's an unselfish group of the Buckeyes. Receiving for five man rush, Guyton throws on target to Devin Smith. And a first down inside the San Diego State 45 yard line. Again, knowing where he's going with the ball, understanding the defense. Talk about him all the time. You the corner, throw the corner. The corner goes deep. You dump it off to the hitch run. That's a little read between Devin Smith and Kenny Guyton. This goes to show they're on the same page. Bunch formation, four receivers. And plenty of running room as a result. They were all over on the right. Guyton took off to the left. Touchdown. Tell yesterday mentioned to us this formation was coming. It's either a screen or a quarterback draw, depending on the read of the quarterback. Kenny recognizes the adjustment made by the Aztec defense, decides to keep it. Why, why not? Get six. You guys say I can't run like Braxton? Oh, he looked a lot like Braxton right there. 44 yards. The touchdown run, having a 77-yard drive. And Basil for the extra point. Well, maybe we talked about San Diego State. Well, they have a quarterback controversy. They have a yank their starting quarterback. Maybe we'll have one here in Columbus. That's a fast as Lee Corso would say. 28-0, Buckeyes. Well, he we has to... Today's athletic trivia question, the last Cleveland Browns player to win the NFL MVP award. And the answer is the man scratching his head, understandably so. The quarterback's coach at his alma mater, Brian Seip. What a year he had in 1980. The NFL MVP when he passed for more than 4,100 yards and 30 touchdowns. Led the Browns to the postseason for the first time since 1972. He's a Terrific player at San Diego State, 1969 through 71. Childhood hero by Cardiac Kids, Dave Logan, Reggie Rucker. Colin Lockett brings back the Drew Basil kickoff to the 22-yard line. And here's a look at Brian Sipe through the years. Through for more than 23,000 yards 
in the NFL, played 12 years for the Browns, also played in the USFL. He was a high school coach in the San Diego area, very happy doing so. And then Brady Hoke, when he became the head coach, convinced Brian to become a college coach. And he's been on the staff for the last five years. Two years with Brady Hope before he went on to Michigan and now three years with Rocky Long. He's going to have some work to do to get this quarterback situation in shape for the Aztecs if they're going to be a realistic contender in the Mountain West. Quinn Kaler is the quarterback. And Ezell Ruffin couldn't catch it. Of course, it would help the quarterbacks if the receivers did a better job of catching. Eight drops last week. In the upset loss to Eastern Illinois. Now, I, don't, I don't understand what Ezell was thinking right there. He had a chance to get two hands on the ball. He tries to make the spectacular catch when he has the easy catch. Bob Toledo, the offensive coordinator. Adam Dingwell, the starting quarterback in the background. And this is a young man who demonstrated last year he could lead this team to victory. And some impressive victories. He was the backup until midseason last year. Then Ryan Katz, the starter, got hurt early in the game at Nevada. Dingwell led them to a win in Reno, which doesn't happen very often. He also led them to a win at Boise State. And they won seven straight regular season games. He won five in a row as a starter. He's tough. He has the great respect of his teammates. Pastor Ruffin got them the first down. But he needs to be more accurate. That's not a good ratio eight touchdowns seven interceptions and even worse this year no, the problem is you're not seeing any progression in this game and in that position the second year starter has to progress and get better he's kind of regressed in his progress Taylor's pass deflected and incomplete kind of set up another quick screen they're a big screen team they ran eight of them last week against eastern illinois bradley roby coming on the blitz deflected the pass this is a scouting report for the buckeyes anytime bradley roby's in the short side of the field luke fickle likes to get very aggressive bringing him off the edge because of his ability to make the big play plus again I go back to the point i made earlier on very physical football player especially for a corner Taylor steps into the throw over the head of Bizell Ruffin with Duran Grand coverage. You know what made me feel old today? Realizing that Brian looking Seif in the mirror the <laughs> fact that I feel old every day. Brian Seif is 64 years old. It's time. unbelievable. I was thinking about that too. I mean, those games, the Browns team, Sam Tigliano was the head coach, got everybody's imagination and the great players in the seems like yesterday. Frankly, at 64, Brian looks like he could maybe come out of the press box and mm -hmm. put him on a jersey and in great shape. Resume Aztec quarterback duties. 13th round draft pick. That's old when you say 13 rounds. Mm, there it is. Taylor is smothered, lost the football. And he got double teamed by Michael Bennett, Noah Spence, and it is ruled a fumble recovered by Ohio State. We're going to run a little bit of an X game right here, Sean. It's an exchange of pass rush responsibilities between Bennett and Spence, two of their best defense linemen. Watch the X. Here comes Bennett on a spin. Noah Spence around the top. Get sandwiched. And I love the fact that Michael Bennett does not quit on the play, gets the sack, sees the ball, and fights for it to give his offense a chance to score points. He just ripped it away from Zach Dilley. No Spence is going to cause a lot of headaches as we progress through the season. If you're an Ohio State fan. Speed off the edge. Puts fear in offensive tackles' hearts. Guyton after the pump fake. Dumps it off for Devin Smith. He's taken down shy of the 20. Good work by DeMonte Casey. One of the big problems on defense this year for San Diego State, they had 15 starters back from that team a year ago, but they lost two terrific cornerbacks. And the inexperience and talent drop off in the cornerback position a year ago was really in evidence last week against Eastern Illinois when the Panthers, an FCS team, threw for 361 yards. Three touchdowns. 
Well, the problem also for the San Diego State defense, when you have new corners and you're a blitzing team, you're counting on the blitz to get there. Mm -hmm. To force bad decisions by the quarterback. Ball start. Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty, second down. So far in a game and a half, they haven't created a lot of pressure to take some of that pressure off the corners. And they lost Leon McFadden, one of the best cornerbacks in the country last year. He's a four-year starter, three times first-team all-conference. Was a third-round pick of the Cleveland Browns. He's made their team. And Josh Wade, the other starting corners, now with the BC Lions in the CFL. And they're still trying to figure out who their best corners are. That's why they're part of the rotation at the cornerback position. Jordan Hall lunging for the end zone. They're going to mark him out of bounds back around the six. Well, now they're moving it closer to the goal line. Looked like one official was going to mark it at the six, but he was just waving for the ball. They're going to put it down at the one. Yeah, patience is the key right here with Kenny Guyton stringing that option along, waiting until he's attacked. When you get it to Jordan Hall, he's really having, I know it's early, but the, the best production of his career. Last week setting a career high in yards rushed. Opportunity to play with the suspension of Carlos Hyde. This team will be different with Carlos Hyde. He will make that offense better. And they're working with Hall at a hybrid type position. They are reviewing the play. See if it was a touchdown. Looks like he stays in bounds the entire way. Until he gets down to this point and the out of bounds. I think that's Crowd thinks it's a touchdown. The question I would have is when does his left foot hit the white boundary? Yeah, I don't think he's down before he gets it to the pylon. That's a bang bang call. A little tough to tell based on that angle, but the ruling on the field was that he was out of bounds short of it. Left foot down. I don't think that's a touchdown. Not sure it's going to matter much. Bill Simons is the replay official. Steve for Janik, the communicator. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was out of bounds, short of the goal line, first and goal. Bill wanted to make everybody know that was confirmed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were right. <laughs> the only negative. That you continue to play, and that is certainly the right thing to do. Is that Braxton Miller, had he been able to play today, would have put up some big numbers of an eye toward the Heisman Trophy against this defense. The way this game is going, Rod Smith touchdown didn't hit the ground. He was on top of some bodies and spun forward into the end zone to make it 34 to nothing. What a bad surge. The Aztec defensive line. Rod Smith, that big body, rolling over the body. He's not quitting on the play. Getting the front part of the ball over the front part of the goal line. It doesn't have to go into the red. It just has to cross the front part of the goal line. And on a roll, the second effort, he does. Drew Basil adds the extra point. Seven possessions for the Buckeyes, five touchdowns, and a 35 nothing lead as we send it back down to Shannon Spade. Well, Sean, Chris, as you guys know, most teams have motivational speakers or speakers come and talk to the team during the, before the start of the season. And Ohio State had a, a guy come and talk about leadership, specifically rebounding from adversity. This has been their motto all season or for the season, E plus R equals O. You cannot control the event is what Urban Meyer told me, but you can control your reaction which then of course has the outcome so responding from adversity how they how they get back out there and respond is the key and I think he's pretty happy with the way they've responded they had the pick and then of course came back and uh, you've seen what they've been able to do on offense since I think we need to come up with a motto this year guys what do you think mm. yeah uh, you're the creative one Chad. Chris and I have absolutely no chance <laughs> that's been big he's been preaching that all year it's something in the offseason too about educating his team about life after football, life during the football, about being a parent, about finance. 
He's investing it all in with the Buckeyes, not only on the field, but off the field. Basil kicks off. Now to Colin Lockett. With some running room. He's out of bounds at the 36. Sent sprawling by Bradley Roby as we send you back to Robert Flores. All right, Sean, right now on ESPN, Georgia has scored 10 unanswered points to take a 10-3 lead over South Carolina. Aaron Murray, first touchdown pass of the season. This one to Arthur Lynch. Late first quarter, and Georgia leading South Carolina 10-3. A big game for Aaron Murray. He needs to step up in a big game. This is his opportunity. Really a big game for both teams. Georgia with that loss already at Clemson. Realistically, could not afford another to have any shot at a national title. South Carolina harboring conference championship and national title hopes of their own. Good run by Chase Price. It was very near first down at the 46. And they do signal first down and wind the clock with three minutes to go in the half. Yeah, I'm watching Chase Price on film. Small guy, but powerful. Built low to the ground. But sometimes height as a running back is an advantage. Why you can hide behind those big defense linemen. And as a former linebacker, a lot of times I'd rather play against the big guys as opposed to the little guys because I can find the big guys. Four first downs now, so they have surpassed their total the last time they were here. Balls out. But he apparently was ruled down. Chase Price, the ball carrier, and it will be Aztec's ball at the Ohio State 44. And yeah. he was down. A little something going. And I think Rocky Long on the sidelines, he might have challenged their toughness. After last week and this week, guys, you got to make a decision. Do you want to come out and play? I'm going to run the ball. We're going to get physical. Are you up to the challenge? And so far, the first two plays, that offensive line is playing a little bit more anger. Second and three, they cross midfield for the second time. Donnell Humphrey. Close to the first down. Ryan Shazier made the tackle. Humphrey's another little guy. List him at 155 pounds, 5'9. Bob Toledo said he runs pretty tough up inside for a little guy and is terrific in space with great speed. Matter of fact, Colin Lockett said even when Humphrey's jogging, he looks like he's moving <laughs> fast. You should know because Colin can get out there and run down. They give it to the fullback, and Chad Young has the first down. Jimmy Johnson is ahead of the pack in the final race before the chase, defending champ Brad Kozlowski needs to win, get some help if he's going to be in the chase. Last chance for drivers to lock up the spot in the chase. Don't miss the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Richmond tonight at 7 on ABC right after our game. Kozlowski is 28 points out of 10th place. Wide open. Robert Craig ahead. The backup tight end. There's a flag down the secondary. The big gainer for the Aztecs if it stands. They're going to get Ohio State for holding in the secondary. Holding. Defense. A 37. Penalties decline. First down. Joshua Perry guilty of the hold. Clock running now. Under a minute to go in the half. It's the longest play from scrimmage for the Aztecs. 17 yard gain. First catch of the year for Robert Craighead. Bob Toledo. And the offense trying to get on the board here before the half. What a sense of urgency. Just a tap. Let's go. Clock is running. Two timeouts left for San Diego State. Taylor had a man wide open and missed him. Right over the head of Colin Lockett. Oh, he's going to kick himself for that. Grant number 12, the corner and man coverage on the backside falls down. He stayed a little bit more patient. He had a wide open Lockett to throw to. Watch Grant. He's going to lose his feet. There's a corner. Oh, no, excuse me. He got run over. Yeah. You're going to get physical. Lockett's a physical guy. Brother Brett Lockett played UCLA, a defensive back in the NFL. Second and 10 from the 26. Ben Kaler throws, caught inside the 10. 
Ezell Ruffin taken down immediately by Duran Grant with help from C.J. Barnett. A little bit too much of a cushion. You understand why they have a cushion in this situation. And keep them out of the end zone. And protect that end zone at all costs. Another 17 yard gain. Big throw over the head of Ruffin. Bob Toledo in his first year as the coordinator. We mentioned Andy Ludwig led the run heavy attack last year. Bob Toledo, a West Coast offense disciple. Kept a lot of the same offense, but wanted to add more passes. They were 103rd in the nation in passing yards. He wanted to get back to better balance. And the play from behind big in both games, then it'd be hard to be balanced. You can't really run the football with regularity when you're down by double digits as they've been in both games. Second and goal. Taylor throws short of the end zone. Bradley Roby the big tackle on the locket. And a timeout called by San Diego State with three seconds to go. They have one left, but that probably doesn't matter. Not enough time to use it in all likelihood. I think they're down 35. You don't bother with the field goal. No. So this week, ESPN's Monday Night Football kicks off with a doubleheader. At 6.55 Eastern Time, the Eagles take on the Redskins. And then at 10.15, it's the Texans and the Chargers. Monday Night Football, Monday, 6.55 and 10.15 on ESPN. And also live on Watch ESPN. Anxious to see Chip Kelly run that offense in Philadelphia. Hopefully all the RG3 drama will stop. I, I've never, it's crazy to me. Either he's healthy or he's not healthy. Apparently he's healthy and going to play, but <laughs> I agree with you. I mean, it's, like, a lot of coverage. <laughs> daily report on what? Mm -hmm. He's coming off an ACL. He'll oh, be fine. 62 yards on this drive. Hopefully they had a total of 37 prior to this drive. Crowd wants the shutout. They put a second back on the clock, so perhaps that timeout could be a factor. Chase Price, the running back. A slant is broken up. Intended for Ruffin. Defended by Duran Grant. And the clock has run out. So even though they ran a quick hitter, the four seconds expire. And the Buckeyes throw the shutout in the first half. They'll get the ball to begin the second half. Bob Toledo, the Aztecs offense searching for answers. Defense could use a few problems solved as well. Here's Shannon. Coach, you made the decision to keep Braxton Miller out the rest of the game. What are the extent of his injuries? Well, he's got a little MCL sprain, and uh, I think he might be able to go back, but uh, I'm going to see how it is when we get into halftime. You uh, Kenny's done a nice job. You talked about complacency this week, the lull. What do you think about the way that they just uh, held your defense just played? I think, uh, you know, when you're up, uh, what is it, 35 nothing, it shows a little bit about who they are. shows a little bit about there's a little depth in that D-line that compete for spots right now, which is what every coach wants. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. 309 yards of offense in the first half for the Buckeyes. They're up 35 zips. Stay tuned for a complete halftime report right after these messages. back to Columbus Ohio at the half Ohio State the number three team in the country this week behind Alabama and Oregon dominating San Diego State 35 to nothing total yardage 309 to 99 time of possession not the only thing that was just about even Sean McDonough with Chris Spielman it's interesting we talked with Rocky Long the San Diego State coach last night he said we may do a few things in the game that don't necessarily give us the best chance to win the game tomorrow today now 
because they're saying things we have to work out with an eye toward our conference schedule, which is that much more important. So now in the second half, I guess, Chris, it's really just that. Yeah. Taking advantage of this opportunity to play against a good team to try to solve some of your problems. Well, they need to work those things out that they're trying to work out. In other words, what they're doing now isn't good enough. And I think for me, this is a team with 15 starters back off a co-championship team. And they're not playing with any effort or any sense of urgency. And it starts at the quarterback. I mean, you have inconsistency at quarterback. They showed a little life in the second quarter. And I think what happened, Sean, in that locker room, Rocky Long had to challenge them, challenge them directly to get it going. Send you down to the sidelines. Here's Shannon Spake. Well, Chris, you're exactly right. Last night when we spoke to Rocky Long, he told us that he doesn't sugarcoat anything with his players. In the locker room, he told them flat out, we have played terrible football. Now, Sean, you did mention about using this as an opportunity to get better in certain areas, and I asked him about that. He said in the first quarter, he felt that they pl played pretty well given the field position that they had, but after that, it was just terrible. We said the loss last week to Eastern Illinois was as bad a performance as he's ever been around. It's a little bit more understandable given the quality of the opponent. Aztecs kick off. Seamus McMorrow's kick down in the end zone. Here's a look at our Pacific Life game summary. The Buckeyes have done this for the most part without Braxton Miller who left the game early with a knee injury. He also took a hit to the head in that play and diagnosed with an MCL strain. And his replacement, Kenny Guyton, has been terrific. Besides the one mistake on the interception, he's been near flawless. I like the decisions that he's making with the football. Very accurate throwing the ball also. Guyton 10 out of 13 passing for 102 and a touchdown. He also threw an interception. They rushed for 68 yards, including a 44 yard touchdown. Gordon Hall, the back behind him. Almost broke three, got eight. On the first play from scrimmage, Braxton Miller on the sideline has not returned since that injury. Emerged from the locker room with that big brace on, but no need to put him in. When he turned to the field, they were already ahead 21 to nothing. There's no sign that that was going to turn around. I think this offense is going to let up on that throttle. One of the things Urban wants to coach against is complacency. And one way to do that, how are you going to respond when you're up 35 to nothing? Herman is the offensive coordinator he called the run for Jordan Hall. He was second guessing himself after the game. They threw only five passes in the second half last week. Beat Buffalo 40 to 20. Hey. Tom Aaron, the far right, sunglasses. Without the hat. Entire coaching staff back intact and that really helps last year was a new coaching staff a lot of them had not worked together Ezekiel Elliott is in at running back with his second carry he's a true freshman from St. Louis had one carry with two yards in the opener this one is a pretty good run his first carry of the day good for 15 but a flag down personal foul face mask offense number 80 15 yard penalty first down Chris Fields demonstrating to the sideline folks that he grabbed somebody by the shirt not the face mask but he got called for a face mask See right there, yeah, he's grabbed that face mess, and that his his second penalty. He had a holding call earlier, and again with the competition at the receiver position, you don't want to make too many of those no mistakes. So it'll be a more permanent position right there. Well, sometimes coaches like it, even in a big win, fairly comfortable win like the Bug guys had last week. When there are some negatives that they can use as coaching points to keep their team's attention, avoid that complacency. They had a number of those things happen last week. The thing that will bother Urban Meyer today is the penalty, which continued to pile up. There's a flag down. This pass caught by Evan Spencer. J.J. Whitaker made the tackle. Legal use the hands of the face. Offense, mm. 79. 15-yard penalty. First down. Speaking of penalties, that is the seventh now. Back-to-back. 
big flags against the Buckeyes. Marcus Hall called this time. Well, that's Marcus's third penalty of the game. It's something you want to clean up. And a lot of times, it's inadvertent what happens on a um, pass rush in and pass protection. Those hands slip up into the face. The key is to get off of it. And they, nothing bothers him more than mental mistakes because he believes all those types of penalties can be controlled by playing proper technique. Second and 31, Guyton, plenty of time. And a drop pass, Devin Smith, the intended receiver. King Holder, part of the coverage. We're hoping Holder can emerge. Mentioned they're trying to replace both starting cornerbacks. And it's hard for Rocky Long to play the way he wants to play if the cornerbacks can't cover man for man. Ezekiel Elliott remains the running back. That's one of the examples, the most obvious example of what we're talking about at the half. Rocky Long said if we were really doing everything we could just to win this game, we wouldn't play a lot of man to man against this team. But if we're going to play defense the way we have to play, to be competitive in our league and perhaps win the title, we need to get better playing man for man. We're going to play some today. But the conference title is the most important thing. So we're preparing to win tomorrow. And we're going to try to win, but we may have to do a few things that aren't necessarily designed with winning the game against Ohio State. I think that point is going to be made in the second half, even more so because of the score. And if you're going to play man to man and you're counting on a 3 3 5, which is pressure from all different directions, the problem you're doing is you're putting too much pressure on those corners to cover for a long time because there's no pressure being created. They did not have a sack last week against Eastern Illinois. Despite the fact they blitz a lot, Eastern Illinois threw a lot. John Sanchez, the tackle, help from Jake Feely on Ezekiel Elliott. In the three to the 22, down 28. And penalties kill that possession for Urban Meyer and the Buckeyes, and they'll punt on fourth and 28. Just the second punt for the Australian, Cameron Johnston. 21 years old, true freshman. Attended a hunting camp in Australia. The Buckeye coaches saw the tape. Rugby style punt, as you might expect. And they needed a punter. And in the summertime, we didn't really sign up with the Buckeyes until about June. 42 yard punt. You might get offended that you called it a rugby style punt. It's an Australian rules football. Oh, was that it's like it kick, is? yeah. See, you know the details of <laughs> so those sorts of things. That's because I'm a big fan of the AFL. Is that where the, the guy in the white jacket yes. comes out and acts as the referee? Yeah. When the guy catches it, it's a mark. You know, you got to hit, hit the ball with your foot. And no, either hand just, pass or kick it. I know you're making stuff up. No, I'm making really it. I watch it every Saturday morning. No, you do. Yeah, about 3 in the morning. I got it on. Melbourne, my favorite team. Get it up to the cartoons <laughs> long enough to watch a little Australian rules football. I'm telling you, I love the Mockingbirds. <laughs> I'm going to call Terry to see if that's true. <laughs> Chase Price, the ball carrier, wrapped up by Curtis Grant. And I think they have to be encouraged by Curtis Grant. He's a young man who was given the chance to play at the beginning of the last season, didn't play very well the first few games, and basically didn't play at all the rest of the year. Now, here's the perfect example of the game slowing down. Curtis had a little trouble adjusting to the speed of the game and using his fine physical attributes and tying it in with the mental. This year it's kind of all come together for him. He played okay last week, pretty good, but he's only going to get better because he's starting to see the game, the big picture of the game. Ooh, Bennett, another big play. He got tremendous penetration and dumped Chase Price for a loss back to the 36 yard line. There's nothing like getting off the ball. Bennett right here is going to beat off the ball and again he slants inside turns his shoulders and I like the fact that as a defensive lineman my son plays defensive tackle I always tell him get your eyes up so you can find the football just don't go in there and pull with eyes down find the ball become a player not give one for one right there he took out two blockers and finished the play by getting a TFL tackle for loss. You offered Noah some advice on his <laughs> football career? <laughs> no, it's surprising. Taylor, flag down, screen pass to Chase Price. He's yanked down by C.J. Barnett, who didn't play last week with an ankle injury. This is going to be a holding call against the Aztecs. 
be fourth down if they turn Holding it down. Offense, number 65. Penalties decline. Fourth down. Joff at Gordon, the left guard. I think the strength of that offensive line is the left with Gordon and the left tackle, Bryce Quigley, one of the team captains. And this is a team, Sean, and they have to get better. They know they have to get better. And if I'm Rocky Long, the biggest thing that I'm going to be judging the second half is the effort and the toughness. Keep fighting to the very end, no matter what the score is. I'm set the tone for them for the rest of the season. Well, at least you know, a line drive punt. Billy Brown. Good tackle in space by Zach Dilly, an offensive lineman. 35 yard punt. Sean McDonough, Chris Spielman, Shannon Spake back in Columbus, Ohio State. On its way to its 14th straight victory. Leading 35 to nothing, for the most part under the direction of Kenny Guyton, the backup quarterback who came in for Braxton Miller, who injured his left knee in the first half. Miller is on the sideline, could come back into the ball game. There's no reason for him to do that. That's Ezekiel Elliott. Who surged ahead for about four here, Shannon. Well, Sean, Chris, you always talk about the intangibles that players bring to the team. Braxton Miller obviously out for the rest of the game. But I just witnessed him walk up to Devin Smith, a wide receiver, and ask him what's wrong. It's all about getting and responding and getting back into this game. And it was an example of Braxton Miller just trying to rebound his wide receivers, get them back out there and respond. That's a part of his growth and development. Maybe, but frankly, part of the leadership program that Coach Meyer put into their training camp this year, putting it into action. Guyton, a low throw and a good catch by Devin Smith, about a yard short of the first down. King Holder had the coverage. More hurrying up, trying to confuse the San Diego State defense, see if they get lined up. Ezekiel Elliott has the first down. Here's Robert Flores. All right, Sean, time now for a Taco Bell Live Moss moment. And after Georgia scored 17 unanswered, South Carolina has responded with a 14-0 run of their own. Connor Shaw and Nick Jones were tied at 17, five minutes and change on ESPN. The feeling fans who are not necessarily rabid fans of these two teams might be watching that game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Must be the eighth penalty against the Buckeyes. Ball start. Offense, number 79. Five yard penalty. First down. It's his fourth penalty. Hmm. Senior from Cleveland, Ohio, Marcus Hall. Part of that veteran offensive line. 85 combined career starts. And they played much better today. Penalties an obvious negative. They had their problems. Of course, Buffalo has a terrific defensive player, Khalil Mack, who was like a one-man wrecking crew last week. Urban Meyer spent some time in the mag. He said, that's the best defensive player I've ever seen in the Mid-American Conference. That could be a first round pick. Guyton deep throw out of bounds. King Holder running stride to stride with Devin Smith. Well, tonight on ESPN's College Football Primetime, two of college football's most storied programs square off. Fighting Irish and the Wolverines. Notre Dame number 14, Michigan number 17. Presented by Hampton Hotels in Primetime tonight at 8 on ESPN. And also watch ESPN, which Chris was watching right here in the booth before the game today. It's one of the greatest inventions known to man, along with electricity. <laughs> I'll throw ice cream in there at some point as well. Here's Elliott. Lost the ball after he hit the ground, it appeared. Ohio State got it back. I think it got back in the hands of Elliott. Apparently it was a fumble. Matt Burhey. They were excited about Ezekiel. Weren't they, Sean, yesterday? Yeah, they want to see a lot more of him. 
four star prospect out of St. Louis John Burroughs High School. In the U.S. Army All-American game Warren Ball another young running back freshman from right here in Columbus. The Sales High School. He stays in the block did a pretty good job. Dayton rolled to the right goes out of bounds. Got a little bit of a shove in and gets the flag. It's Micah Seau, who is the nephew of the late junior Seau. Didn't see any action last week against Eastern Answer Illinois. Personal foul, defense, from the 59. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Micah used to win number 54 and switched to 55 in honor of his late uncle. This is a, a young guy getting his opportunity to play. I know that's not an intention or you know, you're trying to impress the coaches running the ball and hitting get Kenny Guyton out of bounds. He didn't wrap him up in the It's kind of a love tap, but uh, mm -hmm. proper call. But I don't blame a young player for doing that. You want them to be aggressive. More than midway through the third quarter now. Guyton pitches it back to Ball. He had two carries last week and they went over Buffalo for six yards. Jake Feely, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. He's a good linebacker, second team all conference last year. 28th career start for the Aztecs today. That's a guy that has to take control of this defense. I and mean, when we say Rocky Long has to do this, Rocky Long has to do that, eventually some of your better players got to take ownership of what's going on out on the field. He's one of them. Ball remains the running back. He keeps fighting. 6'1, 222 pounds. John Sanchez, the tackle for San Diego State. You know, Sean, I'm looking forward to watching Devin Gardner play tonight. Had a pretty good opening through two interceptions against Central Michigan last week, but I really think he has a chance to be pretty good. And you get the feeling that Al Board just wasn't really comfortable with Denard Robinson as a quarterback. The type of offense he wants to run is what he's running this year with Devin Gardner. Let's hope the game tonight is like the last time those two teams played at the big house. A great rivalry. And Robinson through the Roy Roundtree. 16-yard touchdown with two seconds left. Dontre Wilson. Forward progress stop while he's inbound, so they run the clock. God bless him. Gabe Lemon made the tackle. There's a versatility of Wilson. And his role will expand as the year goes on. He's going to be a running back. He can be that H move back to Percy Harvin type. Then also a wide receiver. And he showed his good hands. Four receivers now in for Guyton. On fourth down and two, they're going for it from the Aztec 28. Guyton kept it. Ran over the defenders you know, for a first down. Sean, some people might think that that's rubbing it in, and I, I don't. I think they got stopped on a fourth and short last week. Nothing irks Coach Meyer more than that happening, so you're going to work on certain plays. And again, you want to develop confidence to pick up those fourth and short. He's not concerned about the scoreboard. He's not concerned about the feelings of the Aztecs. He's concerned about his football team getting better. Ezekiel Elliott back in. It's a lot different atmosphere this year in Columbus. Ball thrown to the end zone, and Brown has it for a touchdown. We talk about the difference this year, not dealing with any sanctions, so they can play in the Big Ten championship game. They can go to a bowl game, and they're looking very much like one of the best teams in the country with this performance today. Absolutely, and... The confidence being instilled with this team, if they know that Braxton Miller does go down, he has number 13 that doubles as a quarterback along with his holder position. He can come in and play and move the team. Well, last week against Buffalo, the first two times they scored a touchdown, they faked the extra point kick and went for two. Urban Meyer said he kind of liked watching Oregon the last few years do that a lot, go for the eight points. 
And it worked well. They jumped out to a 16 to nothing lead, got both two point conversions. Then the last, the next time that they score, they kick the extra point. The crowd boom. They won the team continued to go for two. It like it was only 23 to nothing. 42 to nothing today. Kenny Guyton for Heisman. <laughs> ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy, Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy, and AT&T, rethink possible. And the picture showing the evolution of Ohio State's mascot, Brutus Buckeye. Since he first appeared in an Ohio State football game in 1965. They might want to keep working on the outfit. <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's a man of few words right there. Man, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, not all Buckeyes are like that. <laughs> Very nice. You find your game this oh, week. Yeah. <laughs> 42 nothing. We got a little cranky. <laughs> Drew Basil kicks off. Donnell Pumphrey. Speaking of words spoken by a Buckeye, here's this week's edition of the much anticipated What's the Spiel? Today I want to talk about four steps to avoid targeting. Step number one, stay off the opponent's head. Step number two, keep your head up and hit with your eyes. Do not lower your head, hit with the crown of the helmet. You'll get hurt or you'll get a penalty. Step number three, you want to wrap your opponent up. Step number four, you want to bring your feet and run through your target. When you do that, you will not launch, you will not get a penalty. Let's go over the four steps. Stay off the head, your head up, wrap up, bring your feet, no penalty. Targeting rules this year, big story in college football. Seven players in week one were ejected from games for targeting. The rule's not different, it's the penalties, the enforcement that's different. Nice catch there by Adam Roberts, the tight end. And it's interesting, we talked to Rocky Long last night, asked him about the targeting penalties, and he said he doesn't like the way it's going to be handled this year. He thinks, go ahead, throw the flag if you think it was targeting. That would be the personal foul penalty. But he doesn't think there should be ejection right away. He thinks the conferences should have somebody who looks at it during the week. If they judge that it was targeting, then let the player miss the game the next week. I kind of agree with that. I think Pat Fitzgerald came up with a good idea. Kind of treat it like soccer where you can get a yellow card for the first time, then maybe a red card. And it, it, it's tough, but I do think it's for the betterment of the game, not only in the execution of tackling, because we watch it every week, especially last year, where guys were just diving and lowering their heads, and they're putting themselves at risk for injury. But if you keep your head up and you see what you hit, it's safer for everybody involved. It's safer for the target that you're hitting, and safer for yourself as a defensive player or a tackler. I thought you were going to go with all of that. See what you hit. Hit, hit what, what you, you see. see. Yeah, I was waiting for the rest yeah. of that. Run through your target, not to your target. Maybe that'll be in next week's What's the Spiel? If you're lucky. Mm. It's hard to find volunteers to stand in there and have you tackle them as you do those demonstrations. Pass to Ezel yeah. Ruffin got them into good shape. And then this one to Colin Lockett gets them even deeper. Good looking uh, drive here for the Aztecs. Jay Barnett wants to watch what's the spiel. Head up, run through your target, stay off the opponent's head. Wrap up. Nice job, CJ. I think he has watch ESPN in the helmet. <laughs> yes, he does. That was Nick Savage, by the way, who was my target from Boardman, Ohio, assistant strength coach for the Buckeyes. Good job, Nick. Good job of standing there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just do your job. Letting you pick him up and <laughs> drive him back. Completions of 17, 18, and 18 on this drive for Quinn Kaler. He's up to 13 out of 19 for 130 yards. Pitches it back to Donnell Puffrey. Couple of nice moves, and it's first and goal for San Diego State. Joey Bosa made the tackle. A good move and good signs to come for San Diego State because Puffrey put a move on one of the better tacklers on the Buckeye defense and Christian Bryant. Little life. This is what you want to see if you're Coach Toledo and Coach Long from your 
offense come out and fight. And it's shut out since 2006. They had a chance late in the half to score, but the half ended with them inside the five yard line. Humphrey. Ooh, did he get stood up. Curtis Grant leading the tacklers for Ohio State as we took down to two minutes to go in the third quarter. I'll take uh, Taylor's not bad. I mean, he, he's getting the ball there and he's making good decisions, and that's for his first time really is any extensive game action in a while. He's doing a pretty nice job leading this offense. Humphrey the tailback. Play action pass. The fullback, Young, touchdown. Chad Young, senior from Laverne, California, has San Diego State on the board. His first touchdown of the year. Well, you can tell Quinn's been taking a lot of mental reps in practice because I like the way his eyes popped around. And again, it goes back to the rule. You read the corner, if he's off, you throw it to the flat. This time, he picked up the read, rewarded with six points and a touchdown pass. It's their second touchdown of the season. They scored one touchdown last week against Eastern Illinois and kicked four field goals. Wes Fear picked those field goals. In fact, he was four for four. Didn't field goals made last week. That's the point of the low line drive up and through. A minute 41 to go in the third. As Tech Nation hanging in there. This week ESPN's Monday Night Football kicks off with a doubleheader at 6.55. The Eagles and the Redskins. And then at 10.15 the Texans battle the Chargers. Monday Night Football this Monday, 6.55 and 10.15 on ESPN. Also live on Watch ESPN. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Lisa Salters love the Eagles Redskins game. Chris Berman, Trent Belfer, Sal Palantonio. The Texans and the Chargers. Seamus McMorrow to kick off. They thought he might handle all of the punting, kicking off, and place kicking this year. But he had a quad injury in the preseason. Close line on Bradley Roby by Marcus Andrews, and there is a flag down. Excuse me, on Dontre Wilson. Let's see if he gets him in the neck area. That's an area that they're also trying to protect. Yeah. That might be a targeting rule because it does not have to. I was told by the replay officials it does not have to be the helmet. Helmet no helmet. foul on the play for a face mask. First down. They avoided the face mask. And he hits Redmond in the neck area. And I know that's an area that people were concerned about and targeting the head. You want to stay off the head. Maybe they felt like he hit the shoulder and the chest. It'd be interesting. I think that would be reviewed and be a coaching point tape for the officials this next week. Ezekiel Elliott, the running back, as the Buckeyes go out of the pistol. Knighton swings it wide. Dontre Wilson couldn't escape. Here's Robert Floyd. All right, Sean, crazy game right now on ESPN. Check this out right before halftime. Connor Shaw to Nick Jones. Second time this combo has worked for a touchdown. South Carolina, Georgia, tied at 24 on ESPN. Coming up tonight here on ABC, Jeff Gordon, 11th in the point standing, six points out of NASCAR's playoff. He has the pole position for the Cup Series in Richmond. All right, thank you very much, Robert. Looking forward to the race tonight. I know Shannon Spaker. I've learned so much about NASCAR the last two weeks just working with Shannon. Been a big part of our NASCAR coverage on ESPN for many years now. I wonder one thing. Every time I hear NASCAR, Jimmy Johnson, everybody's chasing Jimmy Johnson. He seems that, I mean, that's a model of consistency, right? He, he's been pretty good over the years. Yeah. Shannon, that's one of the things I learned. And said this just in Jimmy Johnson is good. <laughs> Didn't she say the crew chief is uh, more important than the driver or just as important as the driver? Uh, not paying attention. She <laughs> might have. She also said the producer <laughs> is more important than the announcer. So then I knew the credibility of that statement was totally shot. Guyton runs for a first down. Shannon. Yeah, guys. I'm 
would say that it's, um, you know, the crew chief is 50-50 with the driver, kind of like us, right? I'm down here, you're up there, 50-50. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson, though, he just had a little girl, so big congratulations to him, and uh, I know he's going to be out there racing. Mm. You know, got a new member of the family there. Mm. Got to assume it was his wife <laughs> who had the little girl, actually. But... <laughs> Into the quarter, and it cannot end soon enough. Yep. On to the fourth quarter. It's amazing how many of these teams around the country figure that part of this thing out. Braxton Miller on the right, starting quarterback for the San Diego State coach Rocky Long, the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy. Played only seven plays today. Left in Ohio State's first possession with a knee injury. Kenny Guyton has been terrific as his replacement. 14 out of 20 for 133 yards passing. He also rushed for 80 yards. And a touchdown. Andre Wilson, the running back. And the freshman. Another nifty run. Crowd loves it. A lot of them have left. Another warm day, particularly those sitting in the sun. Then as Harris made the tackle. And they really love Wilson out of Texas. Versatility to this offense where you can line him up and it creates matchup problems. And as his role expands, see that position right there as a running back? When you start releasing him on pass routes and getting him matched up with linebackers, that's a nightmare for defenses. 17 yard gain. Wilson, four carries for 50 yards and a touchdown. Averaging 12 and a half per rush. An average that might be in trouble here. And he is taken down across the line of scrimmage by J.J. Whitaker. Well, this is year two for Urban Meyer at Ohio State and where he's been the second year has been terrific at Bowling Green at Utah. Of course, Utah, they went undefeated his second year and won the Fiesta Bowl at Florida. They won the national championship in his second year. Now at Ohio State, still hasn't lost a game. 12-0 last year, 1-0 this year. You know, I think Sean, just after working with Urban for a year, I think he's a better coach than he was when he left because I do believe he's enjoying it. You actually see him smile on a Friday where we've done games down in Florida. When you go around him down in Florida, he, he's clinching himself and he's all uptight on Friday. Yesterday, he seemed relaxed and smiling. Now, I know he has San Diego State, but that's one thing that was a point of emphasis coming back that he was going to enjoy the journey and understand that it's okay if you lose a game or it's okay if things don't go well. Enjoy your journey, and that's what he's starting to do here at Ohio State. Well, we won't know how okay it is to lose a game because he hasn't done it yet. Yeah. It's not going to happen today. No, I mean, but I'm just anticipating what's going to happen because I know he's worked very hard on approaching that part of his life and that part of his job. Guyton. Rose. Devin Smith, the catch. Now, another tangent relative to this game with Braxton Miller going out early and Guyton playing like this. Obviously Braxton Miller isn't compiling numbers that would help him right. toward the Heisman Trophy candidacy. And the other part of that is if Kenny Guyton can step in and put up Braxton Miller type numbers, is it going to have some wondering, well, maybe a lot of quarterbacks could step into this offense and put up those kind of numbers? Well, uh, well I, I, you know, I, I see your point right there, but then again, you look at some of the runs that Braxton Miller and the creativity and the athletic ability, that's what separates him from a lot of these quarterbacks that we see. And by the way, I don't feel that right. No. Braxton Miller's a special talent. <laughs> yes. but Thank you. Some others might be wondering. And then again, they might not be. They hold on down. <laughs> Back inside the horseshoe, we'll take a look at the Pacific Life game summary early in the fourth quarter. Ohio State leading 42 to 7, playing almost the entire game without Braxton Miller. Kenny Guyton's been terrific. Adam Dingwell started a quarterback for San Diego State, but he got yanked in favor of Quinn Taylor, who led them to a touchdown. On their last drive, the defense stopped Ohio State on downs, and here's a screen on first down for the Aztecs. Donnell Humphrey flagged down in the middle of the line of scrimmage. Humphrey getting a lot of action here. No need to keep Wemma in the game. Personal foul. 
flipping. Offense, 65. 15-yard penalty, first down. Off the Gordon, the left guard, he'll do the penalty, and no reason to keep Moema out there when he's been trying to recover from an ankle sprain suffered last week in the opener against Eastern Illinois. You mentioned Bob Toledo came here as the new offense coordinator. He wasn't going to change a lot. But I think we've seen with the two weeks why last year San Diego State was a 65% of the time run team. I think they really need to get back to that because the quarterback play isn't going to be outstanding enough to have a higher percentage of throwing the ball. I agree with that. that. That's their identity, and that's what Rocky Long has built on both sides of the ball. It's a physical presence. And I think right here, though, they got a decision to make next week, and I would not be surprised if Quinn Kaler's your starter. Well, I going think he has to be, don't you? He's been much more impressive. Now, e even when the game was not, not completely out of hand, he was still making good throws and on time. And they've talked about it. One of the areas where Adam struggled was with his accuracy, and they said an accuracy is a strong part of Quinn's game, and we're seeing that right now throughout most of the game. Taylor runs out of bounds, short of the first down. Bob Toledo was actually retired. There's the former head coach, among other places, at UCLA and Tulane. He left Tulane. He's back home in Thousand Oaks, California. Spent last year helping out as a volunteer assistant coach at Cal Lutheran, a Division III school right near his home. And had no interest in going back into coaching. They were watching San Diego State's bowl game last year. He and Rocky Long coached together in the past. And Toledo's wife, Elaine, said, you know, I really wouldn't want you to go back into coaching, but there's one guy I could see you coaching for one more time be Rocky Long. And just a few days later, he got the call. Rocky's well respected, hard worker. And a guy that tells it like it is. He's very good mm -hmm. with not mincing words. And when we're terrible, we're terrible. He said he hired Bob Toledo because as a dual head coach and defensive coordinator, he really hands the offense over to the offensive coordinator. He's not involved much in the offense at all. He said, I need to hire somebody I know and trust. And I've worked with Bob Toledo on several occasions. I know he's a terrific football coach, and I trust him. Rocky Long, as you saw, winning his coach in the history of the Mountain West Conference, won 65 games at New Mexico. Corey Brown, fair catch of the Joel Alisi punt. Well, some of the fans have left, but that man has not. And that's not a surprise. We'll tell you his story when we come back. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings, the official hangout for NCAA football, Cadillac, and the Venture Card from Capital One. Earn double miles you can actually use. Located outside the Center of Science and Industry Museum right here in Columbus, the Science Spectrum. They tell us it's an abstract kinetic sculpture that celebrates Sir Isaac Newton's discovery that sunlight, or white light, is made up of a whole range of colors. Mm. Kevin Smith. Gain of about 10 on first down. Here's Shannon Spake. Well, Sean, some of the fans have started to leave Ohio Stadium, but one guy who is still here is 82-year-old John Crawford. He has been to every home game since 1943, 434 consecutive games. Now, we spoke with him at the start of the game. I want you to check out these socks, guys. So these are his lucky socks. Not the same socks he wore back in 1943, I will tell you. But he did tell us that his favorite memory is the 1943 game against yeah, Illinois yeah. when it went into fi a fifth quarter, the only game to do so. He also says he's missed lots of stuff. He missed, missed family functions, weddings, but he's never thought about not, not coming to one of these games. I don't know about you guys, but I, if my husband missed games or, or family functions to come to a game, I might be pretty upset. Hmm. Not in the state of Ohio. That's... That's normal in the state of Ohio. A lot of things are scheduled around football games. You would think our spotter Greg Bushy would have scheduled his wedding around. <laughs> <laughs> not much of a team player, if you ask me. 
He was introduced earlier in the game, got a huge ovation from the crowd of more than 100,000 here. That's amazing. Hope he washes those uh, lucky <laughs> socks a few times over the years. So he moved his seats from time to time over the years. His dad brought him here when he was 12 years old. He's worked as a vendor at some games, selling Cokes. He moved over by uh, that tower. So that he'd be out of the sun and the wind for a lot of the game. That's amazing. Every game for 71 years. Yeah, that is. Again, a lot of people, if uh, God blessed them, would do that on a, on a base. You, you have people signing up to do that. Uh, the passion is big for Ohio State football in the state of Ohio, much like Alabama, Michigan, Texas. They love it. A lot of times he was sick and he came anyway. Knighton spun around, got away, and threw it away. In 1992, Mr. Crawford had a family wedding to go to in New Jersey, came to the game, and then a local TV station knew his story. This is in 1992. The streak's still going. <laughs> Stay hot. Yes, but it was already a big deal in 1992. A TV station had a helicopter near the stadium. They put him in the helicopter and took him over to the airport. So he didn't have to go through the traffic and he'd get on a plane to go to his nephew's wedding ceremony that was at night. I'm talking about the TV station was a team player. Cameron Johnston punts. And the catch made by Tim Busy. Congratulations to Mr. Crawford and may that streak last for many more years to come. Back at Ohio Stadium in Columbus, 9.05 to go. Third rank Ohio State leading San Diego State, 42 to 7. Another running back is going to get a chance. Dwayne Garrett, sophomore from Scottsdale, Arizona, in a tailback. Taylor throws to the near side. He's El Ruffin with a pretty good hit from Armani Reeves. Ray Dana Hope. 12. Yeah, Sean Ray Hope if you're an Aztec fan because that's a difficult throw to make. And what I like about Kaylor, even though he does not have the strongest of arms, what he does have is timing so the ball gets there on time as opposed to always throwing the fastball. He'll throw it there on timing and get it there on time. Garrett remains the tailback and he gets the carry. Had three rushes last week. In their loss to Eastern Illinois. Well, you referenced them in passing. I know everybody on our crew wants to send our best wishes along to our spotter, Greg Bushy. Not with us here today. It's his wedding day. And like so many on our crew, he's an overachiever. <laughs> yes, he is. He marries Caitlin Lopresti. As a matter of fact, she is Mrs. Greg Bushy right now. As they were wed back in Massachusetts. A little bit earlier this evening. Congratulations to wonderful people. We know they're going to have a great life together. And our entire crew sends its best. Adam Roberts drops the pass on the flat. Jimmy Johnson still ahead of the pack. That hasn't changed since the last time we told you that. It probably won't change tonight either with as good as he is. But it's the last race before the chase. Brad Keselowski trying to make sure he's in the chase. Defending champ. NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Richmond tonight at 7 on ABC. Look at Shannon's prediction. Like, I didn't even know. I did know, but I really don't understand why. There's the chase, and I believe Shannon told us last night they have 10 races once they start the chase. And Shannon, correct me if I'm wrong. Twelve drivers make it in the chase. Twelve drivers make the postseason. You are correct, Sean. Look at you. You are like just rocking and rolling with the NASCAR information. Does well, at dinner when yeah. you talk, I listen. Chris, I kind of zone out <laughs> most of the time. Do they started like with a clean slate of points or the top twelve guys? Yeah, and uh, the guys who have wins, they get bonus points going into the chase, so they're a little bit ahead of the game. So the top ten in points make it, and there are two kind of wild card people who make it. Correct. So they'll explain that tonight. That's why people should watch the race. It's an exciting race. Richmond at night. It's it's exciting. Lots of sparks flying. Lots of tempers. It's great. We're going four wide. No, I, I don't think you'll see four wide on the short track of Richmond, but um, it's still pretty exciting. Got lots of colors, lots of lights, everything. It's, it's, it's exciting. One of the best of the year for sure. Now, even though there are only 12 in the chase, the other guys get to keep racing. Yes, they do. And no matter how well they do, they can't win the big prize at the end. I mean, one of these guys who's not in the top 12 could win the next 10 races, and he, he just gets a pat on the back? Yeah, it, yes, this is, this is difficult.
top 12 <laughs> postseason. <laughs> the rest of the guys, yes, they get trophies and money. Isn't that good? It is a lot of money. They get the winner's money if they win it? They get the winner's money if they win the, the race. race. But no. they can't win the chase. Perfect. Okay, but do their teammates, I mean, do they teammates, are they blocking for each other and all that going into this? So do these guys count on their teammates to help them in the chase? Well, there's, you know, there's all that, you know, you, you, there's the driver's code, same with playing football, mm. right? I mean, you have a code playing football. Oh. Some things you do and some things you don't. My codes go for the win, Shannon. <laughs> yes. Well, there is that. Okay. <laughs> well, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> Turn left. <Yeah. laughs> you have figured out that part of it very well. <laughs> Dumped off the column locket. First down at the 43. Now I'm going to be watching tonight now the race from Richmond at 7 on ABC. Here's the upcoming schedule for Ohio State. Cal was here last year, so they go out to Berkeley next week. I have to think since Braxton Miller was available to play today, he'll be able to go. I would imagine they'll examine that knee a bit more closely. And one other game against Florida AM and then into the, end of the yep. Big Ten schedule. Two good openers, Wisconsin and Northwestern and Sean and Northwestern on the road. I know they're they're looking forward to that challenge. Taylor's pass incomplete intended for Ezell Ruffin. Do you think Northwestern is a legitimate Big Ten contender? They have a very tough non-conference test this evening. I remember everything just started. Cuse. Against the Orange of Syracuse, the Harvard of Central New York. But uh, what about Northwestern? Legitimate contender? I really like them. I think Pat Fitzgerald has done a really good job of recruiting over the years and getting the talent. He has two quarterbacks that he can win with, either Coulter or Seaman. And they're they're a good team. Venerick Mark has to get healthy. They're better defensively. And he can coach. I mean, he's an outstanding coach that can get it done. And coming off that bowl game victory last year, Sean, that was, what, the first one in forever, I believe. That was a great job for them. And, and they're only going to get it better and better. And I know they're looking forward to the Ohio State people and the fans of the pageantry on their night game in, in Evanston. A little angst here locally after the game last week for Ohio State against Buffalo. It wasn't a work of art. It's amazing, though. You know, Alabama wins by 25. People tell me what's wrong with Alabama. Ohio State won by 20. Most of the emphasis is on the things they didn't do particularly well. But they look very much more like a national championship contending team today. Oh, uh, they do. And it's interesting to me is where did both teams struggle? Last week, Alabama struggled on the offensive line. And they'll be better tonight, just like Ohio State struggled last week on the offensive line. And they've been better today. It takes a while for that group to come along. At least for Ohio State's purposes, they've come along. And I'm sure Alabama will come right with them. Another good-looking pass by Kaler. 14 yards to Colin Lockett. Danny Guyton has led Ohio State to a 42-7 lead. Do you think Ohio State is the clear favorite to win the Big Ten now that they are eligible to play in the championship game this year? Not the clear favorite, but the favorite. I, I'm one of those guys that thinks the Big Ten is better than the perception of the Big Ten. I think Northwestern's pretty good. Wisconsin off to a strong start. Nebraska, if they can get things going defensively and get a little bit more consistent, I like Taylor Martinez. We did a number of Nebraska games last year. I think he has the ability to put up Braxton Miller-like numbers. Michigan. Yeah, of course, in Michigan will, will be strong and, and better this year and more comfortable running the offense that Al Borges and Brady Hoke want to run with Devin Gardner. And you, you take a look at in Illinois, what Illinois did to Cincinnati today. That, that was, was a, a little bit surprise. of a yeah, a surprise. Mm -hmm. So they'll be more competitive. And the most improved team in the Big Ten, Sean, is Indiana, in my opinion. Another good-looking drive by San Diego State. We talked about how they needed to take advantage of the second half to take some positives away, try to solve some of their problems here at the start of the year. Dwayne Garrett taken down after a short game. You know what I'm going to see and be anxious to hear about, because I will follow uh, San Diego State now that we've done them is, is the reaction of the team with Quinn Kaler. I mean, I think he brings a little bit of confidence because he's producing. He's playing well. He's not he's not been rattled at all coming into this no. game. Yeah, part of that though is Dingwell. Whoa, there's an interception. Armani Reeves picks it off. 13th play of the drive, ends the drive. The sophomore from West Roxbury, Massachusetts, Reeves with his first interception of the year.
Well, perhaps the most anticipated game of this early college football season is next weekend in College Station A&M hosting Alabama. We'll have coverage starting Thursday live from College Station, Texas. College Football Live there, 5 o'clock on ESPN2. Thursday night, the pregame show. M&H from College Station. We'll be there. All of the build up to that game, and that's the build up that started just about when the game ended last year. And AM, Alabama's only loss of the season. Nick Manette, the tight end, made the catch, and he was chopped down immediately by J.J. Whitaker. All back with the Buckeyes after the interception by Reeves. Get a chance to see how good Johnny Manziel really is. A chance to prove his. Talent against the best defense in the country in Alabama. Yeah, that win against them in Tuscaloosa last year was a big part of his winning the Heisman Trophy, obviously. Andre Wilson battled his way out to the 29 yard line. Jake Feely made the tackle. Third and four with three and a half minutes to go. Right now, 19 out of 27. Six of seven on third down. Thrown for 152 yards, a touchdown and an interception. Lost one deep down the middle. And wasn't on the same page with Devin Smith with single coverage with King Holder. Fourth down, they're going to punt and aim it ahead. 42 to 7. Urban Meyer can get a little agitated. That headset just yeah. got tossed after the incomplete pass. Make no mistake about it, Sean. He does have Tom Herman, who's a fine offensive coordinator, but Urban's handprints, footprints, everything about this offense, he's all over it. Cameron Johnston, the Australian, to punt. Grandparents were here last week and all the way from Australia to see his first college game. They were celebrating their 50th anniversary in America. Eileen and Jeff Johnston. Happy anniversary. Let's take a look at today's Good Hands play brought to you by Allstate. A terrific interception by Demonte Casey. One of the true freshman cornerbacks that are getting a strong look from Rocky Long. To be active in that defense, to play a lot of man to man, you need to make plays like that to get on the field. Good job. First interception of the career, exciting moment for them. Aztecs going deeper down their depth chart. Sean Hardwick is now in at tailback. Mike Miller, the fullback. Quinn Kaler throws to the near side. Larry Clark, his first catch of the season. Sophomore from Venice, California. Tonight at 8 from the big house, Notre Dame and Michigan. For the last time in Ann Arbor. It's on ESPN and also on Watch ESPN. Tommy Reese taking over the helm. Quarterback for Notre Dame. Went off to a fast start. Really throws the long ball well. Hardwick bounces outside for a first down. And of course, Michigan coach Brady Hope was the head coach at San Diego State. He's really the guy who got this program turned around after a good run at Ball State. They had had a miserable stretch 2000 through 2009, one of the worst teams in the country. The year before he got there, they were 2-10. and ten. They were 4-8 and eight his first year in 09. They went 9-4 and four and beat Navy in the Poinsettia Bowl. Rocky Long was his defensive coordinator. San Diego State promoted him, and that was a good move. They've won 17 games the last two years. He's kept the winning going. So well, this season is off to a rocky start, you might say. But look at the record, 2000 to 2009. 38 and 80 without a single winning season. Well, you take a look at Rocky Long, and I like the move by promoting from within. Rocky Long obviously had a Pretty successful career at New Mexico. Mm -hmm. He was the head coach. Still the winningest coach there. 
terms of total victories. At 38 and 80, they had the 106th highest winning percentage during that stretch in the country. At the time, there were about 110 teams. Larry Clark, another good catch. Here's Robert. Hey, Sean, your game's a blowout. Take the rest of the day off. I've got this. Casey Kane, 12th in the point standings, going into tonight's big race on ABC, the Cup Series at Richmond. Just kidding, Sean. You and Chris take it the rest of the way. Well, Chris took it seriously. He's already left. <laughs> Did you take the day off? It's a home game for you. <laughs> yeah, that's We're right. Home. I had the crew over at the house the other night. Appreciated that. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Very nice. I didn't know that we had to bring our own food and beverages. <laughs> we would have come better prepared. It was nice of you to show us your new estate here in yeah. suburban Columbus. My little bungalow. Mike Miller carried for a first down for the Aztec. Bag up fullback, Junior, from Manhattan Beach. Chris, I think they will take something out of this game. San Diego State, they've had a little more rhythm here on offense in the second half. Incomplete pass off the ricochet. Clark not able to catch it. Well, I think they found their quarterback, quite frankly, Sean, moving forward. And if there's anything to take from this, now, obviously, circumstances dictate a lot of things, but going into halftime, if you're Rocky Long, you got to sell your kids on something. 35 to 0 at halftime. 7-7 seven, seven 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 in the seven. second half. Yeah, that's what you sell. You wanted to see that if you're Rocky, how these guys would respond to come out. They've done a good job. They really have. Well, they need to figure out who they are on offense. Like that. I think mean, they should go back a little more to where they were last year when they were predominantly a running football team. And they need to solve the cornerback situation as well. There's been some moments when guys on defense at corner have made it's a good place today. J.J. Whitaker's been involved in a few plays. In addition to the interception by Casey, and Rocky Long says, we don't have corners who can play man defense. We're in trouble. Yeah. That, that takes a lot of his defensive package out of the game plan. And yeah, they got to find ways to create pass rush pressure with a little more consistency. And he'll do that as they get in and start game planning for their, their conference opponents. Bob Toledo talked about when he was here as an assistant at Oregon with Brooks. They were about to win the game at the end of the game. They had a fourth and goal, and they ran a trap that they thought was going to be a walk-in. And here came a linebacker by the name of Chris Spielman to scatter the play and save the day for Ohio State. Yeah. Do you remember that? I get lucky once in a while. Mm -hmm. I also know that for whatever reason, as I get older, I get better. <laughs> it seems like yeah, at least the stories true. get better. But uh, yeah, I remember Oregon was very competitive that day. Rich Brooks. Was the head coach. Bill Toledo. Musgrave was the quarterback for the Ducks. Mm -hmm. Should have run a trap. San Diego State called Still a timeout. <laughs> oh, Taylor had it knocked out of his hands. The Aztecs got on it. Jamal Marcus, backup linebackers in the game, got to the quarterback and knocked the ball free. Chris Carter did recover it. The Aztec did not get it back. Chris Carter recovered the fumble. Young man, 340 pounds from Cleveland, Ohio. And there's Mike Vrabel, always coaching, coaching hard. Outstanding NFL career. The Steelers and the Patriots finished up with the Kansas City Chiefs. They tell me as nice as your house is here in the Columbus <laughs> area. That, you know, Vrabel's put yeah. that NFL money to good That's use. That's right. He played a he played a little bit later in, in life than I did, and so obviously like anything else, the money got better. But Mike is an outstanding young coach, really bright, enthusiastic, great recruiter. He'll be a fine coordinator one day. Urban Meyer still undefeated as head coach at Ohio State, and the nation's longest winning streak is now 14. Kenny Guyton, a terrific job, stepping in for Braxton Miller, who was hurt after seven plays on offense. For Ohio State does not seem to be a serious left knee injury. The Ohio State folks said he could have returned if necessary. Last time Rocky Long and Urban Meyer shook hands at the center of the field, it was after New Mexico beat Utah. 
And that was the last loss Urban had at Utah. 2003, I believe. Yeah, had the undefeated season the next year, and then went on to Florida. And the good news for the Aztecs, the second half was 7-7, though Ohio State put a lot of substitutes in the game. Both teams did. Here's Shannon. Coach, when you win a game, <laughs> when you win a game by such a large amount, how does that allow you to gauge where your team is? That's tough. You know, I think, uh, you know, first of all, I thought this was a team that won nine games last year, some very talented players, so I didn't, I didn't expect this in the way we played last week. So I don't know where we're at. We'll find out. Talked about the Braxton Miller injury. Do you think it's something that could limit him next week? I think he'd be back full speed. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Next week they head to Cal to Berkeley to take on the California Golden Bears. Buckeyes 445 yards of offense. Braxton Miller shaking up on the first possession. Kenny Guyton took over. Ohio State scored on the very next play. Didn't miss a beat. By the end of the first quarter it was 21 nothing. 35 nothing at the half. Guyton ran. And threw effectively. Ran for 82 and threw for 152. Final score 42 to 7. Coming up next on ABC, stay tuned for the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series from Richmond. For Shannon and Chris, Sean McDonough, so long from Columbus. Now let's go back to the studio.